So if you don't already know, this is um, this is a thing I do each week, every Monday. I do this. I go through the uh, champions, all the champions, and I say what decks I personally think are good and what decks I'm personally using. Obviously, I don't play every single champ, but I have a general idea of most decks. Um, a lot of it's personal preference, uh, but I, overall, I think they're they're pretty solid decks. They're they're good all around decks for the most part. And also, uh, go over which legendaries are useful and which are not. So obviously, Inara's first. Inara. Inara is still she's at least this is still on um, the live servers, not on the OB46. So she's still kind of the same. She still isn't particularly useful in general, but it's just the same as I said last week. I think the cripple's probably the best option. Uh, the wall is not particularly useful anyways, um, but on certain maps like Jaguar Falls or Ice Mines it could be useful. Anywhere where you can actually wall people off uh, consistently then it could definitely be useful. But I'd say the cripple is a good option or the damage reduction is also a decent option. Uh, for either of those two I still recommend this build. Just get as much cooldown reduction as possible on everything. Um, it's just cooldown reduction on Earthen Guard, cooldown reduction on the cripple slash slow, and then some extra HP basically. That's all it really is. Uh, next up is Andrew. Andrew, I actually, for the first time in a while, I actually changed up my deck. I used Darkstalker, which um, is still the most consistent card. Godslayer and Heads of Roll are both like perfectly fine options. It mostly just comes down to what comp you're playing against. If you're against high damage, low mobility targets, then you could pull, probably pull off Godslayer. If you're against tanks or easy to headshot targets, you can pull off Heads of Roll. But generally speaking, Darkstalker is the uh, is the option. Uh, in most cases at least. And with that, I was using this build previously with Through the Warp and a lot of ammo regen, but this build is actually pretty ridiculous in how good it is. So it's the same core build. It's actually the exact same build um, as before the legendary cards. It's just instead of Power of the Abyss 4, you have Power of the Abyss 2. So normally Power of the Abyss uh, resets your your three dashes. So you use your three dashes and then it has if you're not using Dark Stalker that is. Then normally you reset your your three dashes with this card. But if you have Dark Stalker and the dashes are on a charge instead of a full cooldown, then you actually get back one and a half dashes with fifty percent. So if you use hundred percent you'll get all three dash charges back. And that's it's just like it worked before basically. But if you use Power of the Abyss 2 you get one and a half, you get 50% of your dashes, so one and a half dashes. And since it takes a while for you to complete your reversal animation and hit them with the reversal, you're essentially getting two because you have 0.5 seconds of using your reversal. So you're always going to get two dashes from this. So this is like one of the most broken options, at least in my opinion, one of the most broken options right now. Because it also means you can have Seeding Hatred 4 instead of having to get Power of the Abyss 4. So you have a really low cooldown reversal, you get healed on your dashes, and you can reset your dashes every time you have your reversal, which again will be on a very low cooldown. So this is a pretty, pretty solid option in my opinion. This is what I've been playing with the past few days and it's really, really good. And then of course, buying time one and sleight of hand one as per usual. So I think if you're gonna play Andrew, you should definitely try out this build. It's it's 10 out of 10, would recommend. Barracks still pretty much the same. Um, Ar Architectonics is still a, a decent option, Fortify is still a decent option, Tinkering is still useless. Actually even on, on PTS, so even on the next patch, Tinkering is still not fantastic. It's okay, it's a bit better than it was because they nerfed Barrack and put that nerf onto the card instead. So they reduced it by 100 damage um, and then gave Tinkering 100 extra damage, but as of right now, uh, it's not in the game and these two are still the best and I think even on PTS even on the next patch These still will still be the best options turrets definitely see some more gameplay. It's more 50 50 now than it was before um, If you're playing as solo tank, I would still in most cases probably get fortify If you're playing with another tank or a lot of heals something where you're not as dependent on the barricade then you can definitely run architectonics um, and then it's the same the same as before with the with the barricade build, I run the same as before where I get as... I mean, you could still drop, potentially drop uh, the turrets, the turret HP and the turret uh, healing down a bit. But this is my personal build at least. I like Foundation 3 and Palisade 2. I think it's enough. Um, 
it's just a little bit of personal preference in how you distribute your points in this build. And for the turret build, I've, I've put in a field deploy instead of um, instead of palisade. I think it's pretty pretty solid to have field deploy when you have turret build, just get more damage quicker basically. Uh, so definitely field deploy 3 is, is a good option. I wouldn't go field deploy 4, I don't think it's necessary, and then you have to take a point away from healing station. Um, so this is this is my build for the turrets right now. Uh, field deploy is definitely definitely worth it at a level two, level three. Bomb, Bomb King's still the same for sure. Um, demolition. I mean, if anything, maybe overestimated a bit how useful either of these two cards are. It's pretty much just accelerant every single time. I don't see any real reason to pick either of these two. Like it's the same I said before. Like last week, Grumpy Bomb is just it's too inconsistent. You can always avoid it. So I don't really think it's worth it getting demolition. Accelerant's still just the best option, and with Accelerant, I'm using this build, it's the same as last week. Personal preference, of course, whether whether or not you use uh, Jolt or not. If you're not using Jolt, you can get whatever you want here. Uh, you also don't have to use Backdraft, it's also personal preference. I personally like it because getting like 2 seconds cooldown reduction on your uh, on your Poppy Bomb, is can make, that can make a big difference, so I definitely like using Backdraft. And then of course, if you want uh, King's New Cloak 4, you can get that. Otherwise, you could potentially take this down to level 1 and instead get King's Court 4. That's a bit of a personal preference as well. Um, I personally prefer having just the extra HP. But it's up to you in the end. Buck, Buck still the same. Bounce House is really the only option here, uh, for now at least. With Bounce House, same build as I had before. There's definitely a lot of customizability in this. You could definitely go Lifesteal instead. Um, leg Day 4 is not really a necessity. You could probably go Leg Day 2 or Leg Day 3. I might even change my build, but for now I'm just going to keep it at Leg Day 4. But de definitely depending on map, you should have multiple builds set up. If you don't want, if you're on a small map like Frog Isle or Ice Mines where the jump distance isn't as relevant, then you could definitely get uh, a lower level of Leg Day. And you can also sw swap out, say, Vigor with uh, with some extra Life Steal or something like that. So. I would say I would say experiment a bit with the builds, but I would say th this is like my my default deck at least. Drop some leg day if you if you don't need it, and get life steal if you prefer that over the basic healing from recovery. Cassie, Cassie is still the same. Um, honestly, I say exaction maybe is a bit better now. There's more the meta has shifted a little bit more towards solo tank than ha always having double tank. So Exaction is a bit better compared to Big Game. Um, big Game is still definitely an option, and this is a lot of personal preference. Because at the end of the day, they serve similar purposes, it's just how you want to execute it. Like these cards are very balanced with each other in that if you prefer using Disengage build, then you can use Disengage build, even against carries, against carries or tanks. And if you prefer, prefer using Roll build against carries or tanks, then you can definitely go uh, Exaction instead. The only thing I would say is that if you're against multiple tanks, you probably should go big game regardless. Um, it's just, especially if we're talking like uh, Makoa and Fernando who have so much HP, or Ruckus who has a hard time uh, moving away, then big game is still a really good option against the tanks, but it, it is personal preference. And it's the same build as before. Um, you can potentially drop some lifesteal and get lunge at a higher level. You could get rid of somersault if you don't like that. That's just kind of personal preference on these cards, but Incitement 4 for sure. Uh, for the Disengage build, I would say Territorial 4. Again, you can use you can use Sky Warden, like this a build similar to this if you want. But uh, if you if you don't want Sky Warden, then you can go with a build like this with just Territorial instead. Drogos, Drogos definitely like combustible. First of all, combustible is bugged, or at least it has been bugged. Uh, uh, recently, so it hasn't been. We haven't even be able to play with it in the tournaments. I would say Fusillade and Worm Jets are still the best options. Uh, I'm leaning a bit more towards Fusillade personally. Um, I know that today, like Lazy, for instance, prefers Worm Jets by a mile, but I, I I'm kind of preferring Fusillade right now. Uh, I just like having the the pure damage on it, and with the with the direct hits with Fusillade, I use a build similar to this. I'm considering getting rid of Spitfire, but Honestly speaking, there's not too many options uh, right now outside of like the core, Masterful 3, Thrill of the Hunt 3, Propel 3. Like potentially you could go um, Survival 2 here instead. That's a perfectly fine option. Uh, or you could uh, just get like a level 1 card. Just get whatever, like Survival level 1 and get Propel 4 instead. Also a perfectly fine option. Um, 
Worm Jets, it's a similar build, I just don't use Thrill of the Hunt with Worm Jets. I don't feel like the thrust is particularly valuable when you're using uh, Worm Jets. Like, it, it actually tends to slow you down a bit, and I use it more as an escape, so I take Survival 2 instead of Thrill of the Hunt, if that makes any sense. Um, but that's, again, that comes down to personal preference a little bit. This is, these are just my builds. Uh, EV, I still think Wormhole is the best option. I don't, like, the Soar is obviously, like, completely out of it. It's it's irrelevant. It's, it's just a bad build. The Ice Block has some potential, but eh, it's more of a, like, I could see it working if you're going with, like, an all-in comp and you just want to blink in, you Ice Block, and then everyone's going to be staring at your Ice Block trying to get the kill, and then you can have a Buck or an Andro jump and and clean up the kills while they're distracted. But besides that, I would say Wormhole is the better option for the most part. Um... With Wormhole, it's same, same old build. I haven't thought too much about a Ice Block build because it's just, I, I would never play it personally. Like, I don't, I wouldn't enjoy, I don't enjoy the style of, of Ice Block build. Um, but if you do, you can go like teleport and just go full cooldown on the Ice Block. You could potentially get Flicker as well. You could drop this to level 3 and get a Flicker 3 instead. But again, that's a bit personal preference. Definitely want to have teleport 4 in any Eevee build though. But for Wormhole, it's the same old teleport 4, Flicker 4. Cold Blooded 2, Biting Cold 1. Same old, same old. Fernando, Fernando um, Aegis, eh, it's maybe, maybe a little bit worse just because, like, the, the thing with shields in general, this is the same same issue that, say, Torvald has, is that they're really strong early game because you can buy so much time and you can kind of do whatever you want, but then once you start getting into late game, if you if you end up going, like, 3-3 three, three in a game, then the shield's going to be practically useless. Like one Drogo Salvo and your shield's just gone, a Bomb King with a Wrecker and your shield's gone, a Shaolin, all these characters that are really strong right now will just completely melt your shield anyways. So Scorch is definitely becoming more of an option in my opinion. It allows you to uh, chase down kills and actually get the damage to finish off kills, uh, more like the old Fernando. So you can play more of a flank Nando style with that. Either way, I'd say, I, I said the same last week, I don't think the full shield build is really worth it. So just go go with the old fireball build where you just uh, play straight up flank Nando and go in and try to kill people basically. There's there's some personal preference here, like you don't have to have running start, you don't have to have hot pursuit, uh, you can get last stand instead, you could have higher launch. Uh, that's It's a bit of personal preference, this is just what I would use if I played Fernando. Grok. Grok is definitely still the same, like CC Immune Totem is good and all, but mm, it's not good nearly as good as Maelstorm. Like Maelstorm is just like too strong, you kind of have to use it. Uh, and with that, there's there's a lot of uh, potential options here. I've been seeing uh, I've been seeing multiple different styles of build. They all have Arc Lightning four, and they all have Thunderstruck either three or four. But then you have some options. You can have Lightning Rod for some extra healing if they're not getting a lot of cauterize. Like if you're playing solo Grok healer, then you could definitely go Lightning Rod and get some extra heals, some more survivability. You could also get the movement speed instead with Conduit. Or you can just go more old style and get Gale and uh, drop, say, Astral Walker and get a uh, get Haunting. This is a perfectly fine option as well. It's a bit of a more balanced build, I would say, if you're, if you're looking to uh, play a more balanced style instead of just going all out with the right click. Grover definitely still the same. Deep Roots is just the best option. Grover's not in a great spot right now. He's he's viable, but he's not picked very often. Um, but Deep Roots is usually the option when he is picked. You can go for full healing, um, but I I wouldn't say that the full healing is really worth it. It's um, it's it can work if you're playing like a super strong point stack. Then it can work with the full out like full on healing. But other than that. I would say Deep Roots is your general option. And with the root, I go again, chop down four just to get as many as many roots as possible basically. And from there on out it's really personal preference. It's just like you have to like you don't you don't have to really get anything here. You can just get whatever you want. I like having Vine Grasp uh, two and Heavenly Agility one. At least Vine Grasp one I'd recommend. And then you can get either cooldown reduction on the blossom, you can get range on the blossom, you can get movement speed or damage reduction on the blossom whatever you whatever you want there basically if you want to go full heal build then it's kind of the same thing just get full cooldown on the on the heal and then it's personal preference again if you want movement speed if you want damage reduction if you want radius that's all just comes down to how you're going to play it 
Kinesa. Kinesa is still the same in my opinion. Um, there's been some er experimentation with the mine build. There's some potential there, um, on, especially on smaller maps like Frog Isle, uh, where you can tag everyone with the mines. There's definitely some option or some potential there. You can get uh, pretty free shots when they're so slow, and they just waste their time having to shoot the mines because they do actively have to shoot the mines. But generally speaking, headshot build is still the way to go. The build is very much personal preference. This is still my the same build I've always been using uh, with Prodigy Restore, Open Season Quick Scope. But you can swap this out. Like you can swap out Well Stocked for Amplitude. You can swap out Restore for uh, move, Movement Speed on the on the teleport. You can get Beam Me Up if you want. That's all just personal preference. The only one I would say you have to get is Prodigy. Everything beyond that is personal preference. I would definitely recommend getting Restore though. Um, if you want to swap something out, I'd say swap out Quick Scope maybe, and you can take down Open Season by one level if you really feel the need to. But Prodigy is definitely a must. Maeve is still kind of the same as before. Um, she she got hit pretty hard with nerfs. I still think Rogue Gambit's the only real option. You kind of have to have it. There's some potential for the heal on the Q, but honestly speaking, it's just she's just not in a good spot. Like she's not in a good enough spot to really to really use uh, anything but this, in my opinion. Like you have to snowball the fight. If you're not snowballing the fight and getting kill after kill after kill, then you're not going to get much value from Maeve in the first place. So I'd say Rogue Gambit's the option. And it's the same build, just as much healing as possible, basically. Um, I I personally prefer this type of healing. There are other options as well, like you can ha you can go full on full out on the prowl, or you can get cooldown reduction on the pounce. That's a bit of personal preference, but I would say all out on the healing, Savage Four, walk it off for. Makoa. Makoa still the same. There's been some usage of half shell. I don't. Personally, I don't really see the value besides you can put down the shell or you can put down the shield and then have your carry stand in it and then try to hook people into the carries. But that's it's such a I don't know, you like the thing about Makoa is that he's so reliant on his ult that if you take away the damage you get from your hook, then you actually get your ult a lot slower, like significantly slower. So I would say still go with the hook. Even if Half Shell has some potential, I'd say still I would always go with the hook anyways. Because you want you want the insta kills, you want the hook to be a confirmed kill, and you also want to get your ult as fast as possible because you're so reliant on it. So I'd say pluck with the same same build I've been using in the past. If they have uh, if they have cauterized, then you can get um, you can get barrier reef so that you have a bit more a bit more shield potential. And if they're getting wreckers, then you can go more healing with this with spring tide. If you don't want either, you can uh, potentially get harden. This, this build's a bit wrong, but you could potentially get uh, Harden for some damage reduction. Um, there's You can get more higher level Crashing Wave with no healing. You can get distance on your dashes. Like There are definitely some options um, to experiment with. You can even get movement speed if, uh, if you want. But definitely I'd say generally speaking, stick with, uh, stick with either healing or the shielding. Obviously strong on 4 is a necessity on any build you're running. So I'd run strong on 4 every single time, and then salvage, obviously, you have to have at least a level 1. Level 2 is my personal preference, though. Snake. Snake is um, still kind of the same. It's kind of 50-50 between, between the Gord build and the right-click build. Uh, I've been picking the Gord build more often than not, just because of how the meta is right now. There's usually um, one, uh, there's usually at least one, usually two, though, tanks. Uh, and there's usually a lot of people to heal or to uh, slow, and the pocket healing is nice. But when you're running, uh, when you're running like double tank, it's not as valuable because you have to heal two targets uh, more consistently. With the solo tank, you can definitely focus fire the the tank more often. But generally speaking, the the, the slow is really nice because it doesn't mean it means you don't have to pocket heal the other tanks as much. So I like the I like the gourd slow and just putting it on the point with your tank can be really helpful or putting it in chokes so that they're slowed coming in towards the point or whatever works pretty nice but the spirits chosen is still definitely an option if you really want to pocket heal someone and that's that's the way to go uh... it's pretty much the same build as before i'm running eerie presence 4 in all my builds right now in the next patch i very well might not be using eerie presence since they're buffing the radius on the right click it's much harder to actually miss it now so I might not be using Eerie Presence, we'll just have to see in practice how it looks. But many gourds uh, at a high level is definitely good. And then I use Ritual Magic 2, that's enough just to kind of keep you topped off at all times. 
and then I've actually taken away possession because I'm I'm relying more on my positioning rather than being out of position and end up taking damage anyways. That possession isn't really a necessity anymore. So I'd rather just have ritual magic at a higher level. You have option though if you're running a uh, a more heal oriented build you can run uh, without without the uh, if you're running without the gourds though you can have many gourds at level 2 instead and you could potentially get some more damage reduction and go go a bit deeper making sure you're healing your healing your carries up a bit more pip. pip is still the same in my opinion i don't like the i don't really like the heal card that much i've seen some acrobatics uh, being used but i don't see the value in it at all i think catalyst is still just the only real option again if you're running like a pocket strat uh, pocket strat pip solo healer or something then you can maybe get away with mega potion but i don't see the value personally with the build it's the same same build as always um, side tanks for gift giver for smitherins there's going to be some changes to side tanks in the next patch but that's we'll, we'll talk about that next time we do this because uh, i'm not exactly sure what the build is going to be then but for now at least it's still side tanks for gift giver for and then there's some personal preference here but i would say smitherins is definitely a solid option if you want to go heal build, you can definitely go with Gift Giver 3 and then get Reload 3 as well, just to make sure you have more heals. But again, I don't think the heal build is particularly valuable right now. Ruckus, Ruckus is uh, still pretty much the same. I'd say Flux Generator is being picked more often now. Uh, he's run as a solo tank or a point tank much more uh, than initially anticipated, I suppose. The Aerial Assault can be nice, um, but it's not it's not something you can do consistently. It's much more important to have the damage reduction. Um, and with that, it's this is the same build I've been using before. Uh, just get nanotechnology so you have some healing, get metal march so you increase the radius for your team. If you want, you can run a build more like this. So if you don't want any range on your pulse field, like if you're running solo tank and you just want to stand on the point, you don't need metal march anyways because you're not going to be shielding for other people. So then you can just get, uh, get healing instead. So you'd have a build something like uh, something like this maybe something like this but this is just kind of like it depends if you want to stand on point alone or if you're planning on stacking with another tank on point that depends a bit on uh, if you want to use metal march or not Shaolin um, still kind of the same recurve is the more the generally better option but there's definitely some sometimes you can pick up the stealth build uh, if you're playing against a multiple flank team or multiple tank team where you want to get angles and try to get uh, try to get picks from an angle try to stun someone out of stealth and uh, and insta kill them then stealth is definitely an option if you're just looking for general damage, so if you have, let's say, an Andro and an Eevee, for instance, who are flanking, then maybe you just want more consistent damage, then you can go to the recurve. Uh, with either of them, I'm using this build right now. It's still the same build I was using before. I like having the heal on planted, but it's this is kind of personal preference. The movement speed is, is pretty much a core option, and HP, in my opinion at least, is a core option. The only, the only thing I would say is maybe if you want a higher level of cooldown reduction, if you're playing stealth build, you could drop uh, the grounded down so you don't get any heals and take something else instead, and then get Mirage at a higher level. But I personally prefer having grounded at a at a higher level instead. Sky, Sky is still the same. Um, still preparation is the only option in my opinion. Again, like I said before, if you want to get, um, if you're going against tanks or something and you want to blow them up as quick as possible, then you can get damage on the right click. But again, you want the HP percentage damage, so you want to have your right click off cooldown as much as possible. Thus, preparation is kind of the better option there. Uh, I still use the victory rush build. I mean, I don't really play much sky, but I still, if, if I'm getting eliminations, I want to try to snowball a fight and I want to try to... Uh, Snowball as hard as possible, similar to the Mave, so I, I look for an early kill and then I just run, do whatever I want, sort of. That's that's the general idea. Torvald, Torvald still kind of the same for me. Um, it's still field study in 99.9% .9 of cases. There's still some potential option on the Runic Blast, like if you're playing with a Makoa and you silence on the hooks or whatever. But generally speaking, you're going to want field study. 
Uh, with field study, I'm rocking this build, same as last week. Nothing really changed here. You just want as much cooldown reduction as possible on the on the shield, and then movement speed on the right click is nice, and then some some uh, decreased cooldown on the right click is also nice. Tyra, Tyra, I'm still liking my same old build. Um, I think Mercy Kill is still the best option. Hunting party still has potential. But it hasn't really been picked up much. It doesn't seem like uh, other tire players aren't really seeing the value. I guess I guess in it, um, and it hasn't really come out much in the competitive scene. Which Tyra herself hasn't really come out too much in the competitive scene. And when she has, it's always been Mercy Kill. So I'd say Mercy Kill is the better option. The burst damage is really relevant. It's nice for picking off carries. Against tanks, you don't really need the grenade anyways, you're just going to be shredding them. And against carries, it's nice to have that burst damage, so Mercy Kill is a really good option. I still use my movement speed build. Um, there's a lot of potential to mix things up here, it's kind of personal preference, but I definitely still like the movement speed build, and I this is the same build I always play with every single every single time I take Tyra. No matter what, what legendary card I'm playing with, I always play with this movement speed build. Victor. Victor, I think uh, Gunnery is still the best option. Hipfire has a little bit of potential, but you, you're looking, when you're picking up Victor, you're looking for solid, consistent damage, and Gunnery is the best option for that. Uh, cardio, I've seen some experimentation with Cardio, so there's there's some potential there, um, but Gunnery is just, this is going to be your, your most common pickup. You're going to be using this most of the time if you're playing Victor. Um, with that Grenadier, if you're playing against multiple tanks, or if you're looking to punish uh, carries for like shoulder peeking, like if you're playing against uh, more competitive players, then there's going to be a lot of shoulder peeking, a lot of healing around corners and stuff. And then Grenadier is actually really good for that. You can like consistently poke around the corner if you time your grenade right. You can poke them when they're right around the corner, like trying to heal or using their emote to look around the corner. So it can be pretty useful for that. But if you don't want the Grenadier, if you're not playing against tanks or you're not playing against these uh, hyper carries that are like shoulder peeking and stuff, then I'd say you can go without it. You can get uh, firing stance at a higher level so you can juke a bit better, or you could get flat jacket at a higher level. Um, besides that, Predator 3, I think you should have Predator in any build, even with the Grenadier. I think it's it's one of the best cards for Victor, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't leave that out at least. Last but not least, Ying. I've actually been experimenting a lot with Ying. I think um, Resonance had has some potential, but I don't think it's worth it really. Lifelike is still perfectly fine. My rule has generally been like, I will look at the enemy composition, I will see like, can I get consistent left click damage off of these guys? Like, am I going to be able to get the bonus damage consistently? Like, if I'm playing against a Ruckus, if I'm playing against a Victor or a Tyra or a Pip, then I'll say, okay, they don't have too much mobility, like I should be able to get pretty consistent left clicks on these guys. Then I'll go with Focusing Lens. But if I can't get consistent damage, if I'm playing against either really long range carries, so like a Shaolin where I can't really poke him, or a Kinesa, or if I'm playing against high mobility characters like Eevee or um, Androxus, then I'm not going to go with I'm not going to go with Focusing Lens, and then usually I pick up Lifelike, just because it's it's still some extra healing. Um, with either of those, I use the same build. I've uh, I've been using Spring Bloom. I've been using this this build instead. I actually really like the the Spring Bloom, especially when I'm running Lifelike. Uh, I took it out of my build quite a while ago, but I put it back in. You can you can get away with it pretty well. Uh, you have option to take it to level three and get carry on level three. It just depends on the map and stuff. But usually speaking, I play with uh, Spring Bloom four, Squadron four still, and then carry on two. Another option, since you do have Spring Bloom as well, is to take down Squadron by level and get carry on level three instead. But again, I I, I like having Squadron level four. I don't want my illusions to die. It's just if they do die, then having Spring Bloom is nice. So yeah. That's it for this week.